God's people said, amen, amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Fred. The birth of Jesus, our first reading for this evening from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, there came time for her to deliver this child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Amen. If you are able, please stand in the singing of the hymn.
Please be seated. Our second reading also comes to us from the Gospel of Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Our next hymn is Joy to the World. Oh, I'm sorry, lighting the candles. <laughs> sorry. That scripture reading got me so excited, I just <laughs> lost my track. Let us now read as the Advent candles are lit responsively. Advent hope moves us, Advent love leads us, Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us that we might affirm our King Jesus. It is time we set flame to this Advent advert affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeshua was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea, according to the wise Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah, whose coming was prophesied. The same Rejoice, a Savior is born. A Savior is born in Jesus. Joy to the world. Now let us sing together, Joy to the World.
Continuing with the Gospel of Luke, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Thank, thank you, choir. And so now we come to the time of our offering. Again, we thank you for being here and for supporting this church and for all this church does, uh, for those of us here and for the community. And uh, these services would not be possible were it not for those who make their contributions on such a regular basis and give her their, their prayers, their presence, their gifts, and their service. And for that, we are all eternally grateful. So now as the ushers come forward to present the morning's offer, <laughs> the evening's offering, let us now stand and sing together the doxology, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Almighty God, on this night where we celebrate the birth of our Savior, our Lord, the Prince of Peace, the Holy of Holies, it has been a long Advent season, a season of waiting, but the time has come. The time has come for joy, and we, we express our joy by presenting these gifts at this altar that they may be used by you and that we may continue to praise and adore your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. And let us now sing together, What Child Is This? How many of you have ever had expectations that got in the way of something kind of special because of your expectations, such as a, a wedding, a movie, a book, uh, could be even a Christmas Eve service, it could have been a family reunion, a Bible study, a sermon, having expectations before going into a special event can oftentimes ruin the experience. 
Now, it's one thing to have anticipation, to anticipate what is about to happen. But to have expectations can oftentimes ruin the experience. Why? Because we're living in the past, not in the present. Living in the present, living in the moment, is the best present you can give yourself. If you want to live an amazing life, a truly abundant, happy life, make it a priority to live more in the present moment. Amen? Amen. I tell you, this is indeed the best Christmas present you can give yourself. It's also the best Christmas present that you can give to others. Why? Because you are present to what they are saying. You are present to what they are doing. We all know what it feels like when somebody is not really fully present to us when we're saying something to them, right? They're either looking at their watch or cell phone or possibly a video game. It doesn't feel good when someone else is not present to us. It is not life-giving. So live in the moment, whatever the moment may bring. It may be grief. And if it's grief, grieve, weep, if you will. I confess that I have wept tears, more tears this year for the pain and heartache that so many people have been experiencing. So when you need to grieve, grieve. If it's sadness, it's okay. Just be sad. And if you're scared, be scared. Embrace the fear. But the key is, don't stay there. Do not stay there. Let go of the grief. Let go of the sadness. Let go of the fear. Staying in your sadness or grief for long periods of time can have lethal consequences. However, living in the present, if it's something that makes you happy, be happy. If it's something that brings you joy, be joyous. For everything there is a season and for every matter under heaven. So be present to what is and, and feel not only the magic, but feel the mystery in the moment. Have you ever wondered what it was like for Joseph, who found out that Mary was pregnant and what he was to do? I am certain he had expectations of what it was going to be like to be with his bride. And guess what? Things were not going according to plan. Joseph must have been beside himself, and he didn't know exactly what to do. Now, if you were paying attention, the Gospel of Luke is silent on this dilemma that Joseph had. It just glosses right over it. But the Gospel of Matthew does not gloss over it. So here what the Gospel of Matthew has to say about Joseph's dilemma. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Think for a moment about the expectations of the Hebrew people and what they were expecting in a Messiah. 
These were a people in bondage, and they wanted to be free from oppression from the Roman Empire. Now, Jesus' name in Aramaic, as some of you know, is Yeshua. And Yeshua was not at all what the people of Israel were expecting in a Messiah. Yeshua was, was talking about a different kind of liberation, a different kind of freedom than what the people of Israel had in mind. No doubt, Jesus understood the psalm which said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I believe we underestimate the power of this light in our lives that the prophets have been proclaiming for thousands of years, for several millennia, the prophets, the mystics, the poets have been sharing the contrast of light and darkness from joyous times to the times of deep sorrow. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. From Isaiah. We are living in unprecedented times where there is so much at stake globally, nationally, and even locally. Never before have we had so much to think about as we have had in 2020 in the way of climate crisis and those efforts from foreign and domestic sources threatening our democracy. And the year 2020 has been overshadowed with this pandemic, which includes the emotions of sadness, fear, and uncertainty. Now more than ever, we need this light to guide us in all that we say and in all that we do. This light can even show us how the light can be seen from millions of miles away. How many of you had a chance to see the Christmas star? Okay, millions of miles away, and we can still see the light. But as they say, when we go through a year like this, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Now, it may be a ways off yet, but there is always hope that this darkness will soon pass. Many of us discovered this past week from the Advent study what is considered the most spiritual or the most mystical gospel, if you're not aware of this, is the Gospel of John. And most of us had never considered that John had a birth narrative. I have not thought of the Gospel of John having a birth narrative until Adam Hamilton in the Incarnation study said yes, there is a birth narrative. If you don't believe it, listen to this from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to bear witness and to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And then in verse 14, And the Word, 
became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. I promise you, if you take this to heart, it will change the way in which you live and move and have your being. Most of us enjoy the birth narratives. When we, hear, when we come at Christmas time, we enjoy listening to the birth narratives of Yeshua coming into the world. But the knowledge and experience of this light is a transformative event that can turn your world upside down and give you life in ways that you never dreamed possible. Yeshua, the light that came into the world and the world knew him not. And later, Yeshua said this, you are the light of the world. You, you are the light of the world. I'm not sure people have taken this to heart. And I'm asking you this Christmas Eve to take this to heart. That Yeshua proclaimed, you are the light of the world. So nurture that light by deepening a relationship to God through prayer, meditation, music, spiritual practices, and just asking God for the grace to be in relationship to God. Light can shine through us as we seek to be creative in this time of COVID. We all know that our Christmas traditions are not the same. Some are not having them at all. Some are modifying the Christmas tradition to somehow have Christmas. But being creative is part of what the light can bring to us so that we can somehow live in that present moment. Through a simple phone call, maybe all that one has, or FaceTime, or Zoom. But whatever it is, we somehow live in that present moment and embrace whatever is. And how can we be creative with all the frontline workers, all the people that are sacrificing themselves? And from the very beginning, I always wondered how we, we could continue to show our love and appreciation to our frontline workers, our essential workers, if we would just follow the CDC guidelines and slow the spread of this disease. Many of us have family members who are on the front lines, or friends. There is not one person I know that's not been affected by COVID in one form or another. This is not what we were hoping for in 2020. But we can respond. We can respond to this by birthing love into the world, by letting this light shine through us in little ways and in big ways. I want you to listen to the first verse of a hymn we're about to sing. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Let us prepare for the sacrament of Holy Communion as we seek to give birth by letting this light shine through us in good times and in bad. And that, and that guiding light will lead us and empower us in the weeks and months to come as we wrestle with 2021. Please remain seated as we sing the hymn.
we are empowered when we eat the bread of life and we meditate on the words that Jesus said to his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed. He took the bread and he gave thanks. He broke the bread. and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup and again gave thanks and gave the cup to his disciples and said, take and drink, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant, which is a covenant of love poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us as the word became flesh and dwelt among us and empowered us forevermore, that we might take your spirit, your life, your light, your love, and your joy into the world by reflecting the light of Christ. Thank you for this gift, and thank you for the gift of one another. And may we somehow honor each other by being present to one another. In your name we pray, amen. As the ushers turn off the lights, instructions, you'll be remaining seated, so all the lights, the above lights will be turned off and The instructions for tonight is that you don't light your candle until you hear someone say to you, you are the light of the world. And as the ushers come to help me do this, and I'll be helping the choir with this in just a moment, but I want you to wait and not light your candle until somebody makes eye contact with you. So observe. You, Judy, are the light of the world. Sharon, you, you are the light of the world. Now share that light with others.
If you haven't already done so, take a look around you. Make eye contact again and, and say out loud, you are the light of the world. Now say, I am the light of the world. As we go forth this evening, and we're going to linger for just a minute, and the lights will remain as they are, so take your time leaving the building, but there'll be videos again that will be played until an usher comes to usher you out of the building to allow social distancing. So just enjoy the Christmas music until an usher comes to get you. And you can just enjoy our candlelight and the hope that we have in 2021, the peace that surpasses all understanding, the joy that can be ours. Go in peace to love and to serve. And all of God's people said, amen. You can leave your candles burning while we listen to the Christmas music.
Jesus.